welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, oh, nice. I love it. And guys, I know that a lot of stuff happened this weekend, but we have to start with Beyonce and oh, Jay-Z. Yes. It's the law. A joint stadium tour wasn't enough. Beyonce and Jay-Z shocked the world by dropping a surprise album this past weekend titled Everything Is Love. The album was released just a few days after the birthday of their twins, Rumi and Sir, and is available exclusively on Tidal, Jay-Z streaming service. So guys, I have to admit something. Yeah. I'm a huge Beyonce fan, but I was not messing with Tidal until this very moment. I've been holding on to my 30-day trial subscription <laughs> just for this very moment, and yeah. it paid off. I it mean, really did, because I used your, 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 your subscription <laughs> yeah. for it, and I, I was like, I shared it with yes. everybody. See, I didn't know that, and I am a bad Beyonce fan. Please don't hate me, Beyonce, please. Um, I have not listened to the album yet, and it's crushing my soul, but I heard really good things about it. Have you guys listened to it? Clap if you have. Oh, yeah. oh, see? Uh -huh. But that's the issue with the title. Well, where are they listening to it? Exactly, because I, nobody has one. No yeah. one has title, like, no one cares. No one wants to pay that much for music when it's free online. Yeah. I get it. But, I mean, I've seen, like, you can see one of her albums in, like, those, like, hour long videos on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When was she working on this album? How old are her twins? <laughs> They're a year old. They just so, was she doing old. this the entire time she was pregnant with them? Yeah, she's Beyonce. That's what she does. She doesn't, yeah. They don't. That's yeah. insane to me. She so, definitely has more hours in the day than 24. Like, we're oh, yeah. working on 24, and she's doing something else. Mm -hmm. Well, she's not human. I saw that one video. I mean, they're at the Louvre, just like, she's dancing from the Mona Lisa. You see the Mona Lisa? Yeah, yeah. I'm greater than that shit right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the cover right yeah. there. Yeah. Like, yeah, Mona Lisa, me, Beyonce, <laughs> same thing. So I do have some observations. OK, Beyonce's Lemonade was a near perfect album. Oh. You could oh, listen so to perfect. it from beginning to end several times. I've now listened to Everything in Is Love like four times. And like, ugh, you know, like maybe three songs I think are great out of the 10. And the biggest one being Ape Shit, which is the one they did the video for. Right. In the Louvre. In the yeah. Louvre, yeah. And like that's the banger. That's what's going to be played on replay for all summer. But the rest of the songs are like very forgettable. Our producer, Jess, was like, oh, it's so slow. And I'm like, because he's getting kind of old, you know? I yeah. don't forgive Jay-Z. Like, I why know. is he a part of this album? I, want, I would have been happier yeah. if it was just Beyonce. But yeah. if Beyonce forgives him and, and needs him to be a sidekick, then I am fine with it. I, do I feel like we don't commands. have to forgive him if we don't want to. You I'm know? not ready to. Yeah. Uh, I, do, I do what our queen and savior says. So if she forgives him, I forgive <laughs> okay, him. Okay, it's a little too much. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Sorry, I love Beyonce. <laughs> Isn't it? It's just like, it sounds fake. But um, it's not. <laughs> I just feel like Char Lemonade was amazing. Mm -hmm. Anytime he gets a little involved, it's like, okay, it's yeah. okay. Like, she's Lemonade is also down. so relatable. And he's bringing her down. Right, I was like, like, this album is less I relatable, I feel like, because they're like, we're so rich, we're so awesome. And I'm like, I can't connect. But if you're like, I'm being cheated on, I'm like, yeah, I connect. Okay. <laughs> I connect. Yeah. But doesn't the album also deal with other like very hot topic issues like racial inequality? Yeah, and like I that? mean they always speak on those issues, but my overwhelming Lucas really connects to racial yeah, inequality. Exactly. Yeah. My overwhelming feel feeling was like they were just talking about how rich they were on the salute track. They, he literally goes, We got a house in Paris, we got a house in New York. I'm like, nobody can relate to that. Like yeah. I have one shitty apartment. You know? I have like, a studio yeah. apartment. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, you can't really relate to that. But they do some say some really great stuff like our great grandkids are set up for life, kind right. of talking about how they've accumulated wealth. And I think that's really important for the black community to hear. But like I don't know. I think they're our royal family. I don't, you know, I think Beyonce and Jay-Z are king, queen of America. Wow, and you have some <laughs> bold statements. I want to hear what they have. I like knowing they're that rich. Really? Okay, yes, I do. And I want to be friends with them one day. They do <laughs> look like king and queen in yeah. that Louvre. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in the video, they definitely look like they're, like, royals. Yeah, yeah they're definitely walking art. And I just want to say, like, music videos is a lost art. I feel like people don't put the money and time into it, so I really appreciate this music video. Because sometimes people are like, like, yeah, I'll just do a green screen. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah right. that's actually true. Yeah. You're you right. Know? And I think they were trying to say something like putting their art in front of some of the most famous art in history was definitely showing their longevity. And, yeah. like, and only they can that. do that. Like, yeah. who else can shut down the Louvre and film a music video? And like, when did that even happen? Like, in the middle of the night or during the peak hours? Probably no. once Kim got married at Versailles. <laughs> yeah, they like, started happening. Yeah. You know? Like, no, we can't, like, we can't let them upstage us. They're constantly she, one upping each other. She drops albums like I drop iPhones yeah. every <laughs> damn day. 
You know what I mean? I'm like, how is this happening? <laughs> exactly. I don't have time to do anything, and I have a dog and, like, do this two hours a day. Like, yeah. why is she doing all of this? I don't know. And also, do you think maybe the why is her album called him out on cheating? His album was, like, the saddest apology, right. like, please take me back, woman. In this one, they literally have a photo of them on tour saying, like, this is real love. So you feel like they're putting it on, like, a little You know it's real love thick. when there's a big sign in the background right. that says this is real love. Yeah, like, we have three albums about your love. Like, it's, okay, fine, it's real. Yeah. yeah. I also didn't hear Jay-Z's album because it was on title. I heard Beyonce's mm -hmm. album because it was all over, like, Facebook in those, like, hour-long videos where, like, you could watch Lemonade all the way through. Yeah. But Jay-Z's album, like... I, yeah. I didn't hear. I mean, they're just incredibly, incredibly bright people, and I, I do believe their love is real, but <laughs> I think it is also manufactured. I mean, they, 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 I think she plans things out. A hundred, she knows oh, like, yeah. Lemonade was going to come out first, then his apology album. Yes. Now we are unified, world tour. We're going to break in hundreds of millions of dollars in one year and kill it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be there and spending all my money to, you know. Yeah. Give it, just hand. She was like, Beyonce, <laughs> here's my money, just take it. So you think she was like, you cheat on me, and then. <laughs> yeah, you cheat on yeah. me. Then I'll make an album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you'll make an album. Then we'll make a joint then album. Then we'll make an album. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure about that theory. Yeah, but I think he did it, and she was a woman scorned that was like, I'm going to get paid for this. Yeah. And I, you know, can't falter for that. Oh, Most women just eat like a tub of Ben and Jerry's, so yeah. she did more than we did. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> this, all, besides this, um, another great thing dropped this weekend. Are you guys excited for it? After a massively successful first season, Netflix premiered season two of its Queer Eye reboot over the weekend. Ooh. This season, we get to watch the Fab, five, the Fab Five sorry, perform their magic yet again as they travel around the country performing makeovers. Did you guys watch it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Did you guys watch it? Did you guys watch? You watched yes. it so good, right? Guys, I did not cry during things. Like, I did not <laughs> cry during, like, Call Me By Your Name. It was sad or whatever. <laughs> This first episode of this, of this season two, I was sobbing in my bed watching Mama Tammy make those speeches oh. about her son and acceptance. Yeah. And I don't know if that rec center is really that functional. <laughs> I don't know. It looked good. But it had hey, a day, Karen. It was sweet and powerful. I was weeping watching yeah. the okay. Kenzie scene. Okay. I <laughs> couldn't cry because I was so jealous because first season I was asking all my friends, please submit me for the second season. And they were like, Shannon, that's only for men. <laughs> and then Tammy is living my dream. And I'm like... This is so sad. Like, this was supposed to be me. I was supposed to be Mama Tammy. Yeah. But she I'm, used it for other people, yeah. which you have Yeah, yeah done I would have been like, let's get us all nice jackets. Yes. I would have gotten you guys something. I don't know. I, I, well, okay. I don't know why you had to take down Call Me By Your Name in that. No, I didn't say it was bad. I didn't cry during it. I, cried, during I cried so much more in Call Me By Your Name than in the Queer Eye reboot. That's but right. um, I was going to say, like, Call, uh, call me by your name too. Queer Eye season two and Queer Eye season mm -hmm. one have just been like such meaningful shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I felt like, as opposed to other makeover shows that I've seen, they're doing like such important healings. Yes. Yeah. Like just watching them go into towns that might not be like as accepting or any uh, or enter people's lives who like mm -hmm. really need like an internal makeover as well. It's just amazing to watch. It is so fun to watch, yeah. too. So fun. I agree. Yeah. They've really elevated the conversation. I think the first season of Queer Eye was just, like, exposing the world to gay men. And I feel like now it's less about their sexuality and more about them connecting with people and telling stories and, like you said, elevating the conversation. Yeah. Which is just, like, such beautiful TV to have right yeah. now because everything else is so polarized and negative. This is just, like, a beautiful hour of television. Yeah. Also, I could watch the Fab Five forever. Yeah. I feel like the casting on this is so perfect, like, each one of them are just so special and like unique. Mm -hmm. I I, th I love their chemistry. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I want us to be the Fab Four. Aww. One day. We are. Yeah. Can we give one of you a makeover? Yeah. yeah. I can't no. wait. <laughs> Who you shouldn't wants say yes a to makeover? That. I have no expertise in anything. Yeah, you so would look a hot mess after we're done. TV. <laughs> but I mean, what I love about Queer Eye, it is like a really exceptional reality program and it's leading Netflix's push into mm -hmm. unscripted TV. I mean, I don't know if you guys have read this. They're going to maybe develop a show called like Cooking While High. Mm -hmm. and it's like these 10 minute episodes when you cook while you're high. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah, it's and my then, life. But this is my favorite one, because I, I already love to hate it. It's apparently called West Side, oh. and it's a mix between The Hills and Glee, so two really down-to-earth shows. <laughs> and it's about people living in LA on the West Side, and they're musicians, and they just break out into songs. So they're drinking their kale smoothies, yeah. Oh. Don't do that. Don't do I that. feel a song about yeah. that. Don't do that. <laughs> you don't do wow. that? I think That's you just got cast. <laughs> I, I think it I just got canceled. I want to be on that side. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're looking that at you. That sounds fun. How is that unscripted, though? <laughs> because they're, like, living, like, the real world, but all of a sudden but they just burst they out into song. What's yeah. so just they know a song that they're yeah, They just feel it. Come on. They musical improv? Maybe they're doing musical improv. They're like, uh, a truck. You know what trucks do? They have wheels. They take things from one place to another. Did you guys watch that? 
watch that? No? No? I can't wait, Hard guys. No. I think it's good. We should go. Maybe Shannon and I should go be on that show. I don't yeah. know about that show, but I do think it's smart for Netflix to be doing more of this unscripted content. I think it's cheaper, cheaper to produce. We look at the success of The Real Housewives, everything oh, that Bravo is doing God VH1. It's obviously, a lot of viewers want that. So I think Netflix is like gone from this DVD service to just this, they're taking over the world. They're more than a network. Yeah. I mean, they're not just like yeah. a TV network. Netflix is a, a, the system, a kingdom. Yeah. It is just its own thing, a country. Yeah, like, I Netflix mean, like, is our royal family. <laughs> Netflix also. is our royal family. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to Netflix. Yeah. You worship a lot of things. I do. Yeah. I kind of need to pick loyalties. I you think. need to pick yeah. one. I need to pick. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I remember when I would get Netflix DVDs in the mail. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know. And when this is a perfect transition for me. But I remember one of the first DVDs that uh, I had when I was younger was Incredibles number one. Oh. Which brings us to our next story. Ooh. Nice transition. Disney Pixar's Incredibles 2 came out this weekend and it was a box office hit. Audiences have been anticipating a sequel for 14 years and it seems that it was definitely worth the wait. Did you guys see it? I did not, but I'm, I'm excited no. for it. Yeah. I love it. you got to wait 14 years. You know, let the hype... <laughs> Just let it go. Let it just die for 14 years and you come back with that sequel. But apparently the sequel is really great. I have is a question. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's 14 years later, why is that baby still a baby? So it's animated and they don't oh. have to grow when gotcha. we do. Are you sure? Yeah, maybe I it's believe. just been moisturizing a lot. Maybe. They may, it may just be a slow yeah. ager. Yeah, but, uh, I am curious where it picks up in like the timeline though. Yeah. Like, I was actually re-watching the first Incredibles this weekend. <laughs> and, like, is this supposed to be, like, a month later? I think it's really <laughs> recently after the first one ends. Okay. So we have aged. They have not. They're in the same universe they were. I, I love haven't that aged. Movie. You can't say that. You haven't known me for 14 years. I look great. <laughs> you do. You look do look great. fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I don't think... Have you guys seen it? You didn't see it. I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm a little bit scared. I heard that they're from Twitter that there's strobe lights in it, yeah. and I get migraines, so I want to have fun, but I don't want to be like, oh! But you don't want to be you know, yeah. in danger. But that was actually um, going around on Twitter that people were warning people who might have epilepsy or any seizure disorders because people were reacting to these strobe lights. <laughs> right. The strobe lights are that intense? I think yeah. so, yeah. I think it's a big part of rave? the movie. Yeah, I yeah. think it's all in a rave. Oh, cool, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it made $180 million this past weekend. Wow. It takes place in Terminal 5. <laughs> <laughs> Five. <laughs> Sorry, that's Crazy. in New York. That's a lot of money. That's like... 180 mil. Yeah. That is a solid opening weekend. I mean, I, yeah. I, that is, I think Finding Nemo 2 is also a hit. Have you, what is your Incre favorite? Okay. Ooh, my favorite is Coco. Coco? I love uh, Coco. Is it the parent one? It's, no, it's the no, brand new yeah. one with like the little boy who plays guitar. Okay, that was so cute. I love it so much. Coco is, is it my for life. what? Best animated film. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. I'm not really into cartoons. Okay, really? yeah, yeah, I, no, I uh -oh. feel that way. Uh -oh. Wait, I feel that way really strongly. It's like so hard for me to watch cartoons. Yeah. I'm always like, what? This isn't real. But the uh, the first Incredibles movie was, I was like, oh. Really? <laughs> this oh. is a good it's movie. So, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> The Italian guess, accent took over. I guess uh, Toy Story was Pixar. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 and I loved all of those. And Monsters so. Inc. Oh, yeah. That's the only type of animated movie I can watch though, because there's actually like jokes for like Shrek. Shrek. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Shrek Obviously, I shouldn't even bring up Shrek. It's like adult. Wild. Everyone takes off their shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's DreamWorks. Like, Dream Shrek yeah. is so good. Yeah. And like those type of animated films that like throw away lines for like an older audience. Yeah. But in general, I have a hard time like sticking with animated. Show. I don't know. They're so good. Monsters Inc. Yeah, Monster, we yeah, yeah. Why? That's what we are the same genre. Right. 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 Yeah. So but good. You mean like regular anime? Okay. I'm talking yeah. about yeah. like um, a lot of Disney stuff actually. Well, like Frozen, I guess was fine. I've never seen Frozen. Wait, what am I talking um, about? Um, <laughs> yeah, you just want, you wanted to stay like, funny and keep it funny, yeah. and you wanted to be a little bit edgy. And I don't even know what I'm saying. Enjoy it, yeah. but you. But I know like what's the show on television with the. Puppy uh, dog pals. No, oh, like Rick and Paw Morty. Patrol. Like Rick and Morty. Oh. Yeah. Like, okay. It's kind of hard for me to like follow that. Yeah, yeah. that's adult animated no. though. Anyway, I'm okay. gonna go see The Incredibles too. I think it, it looks fantastic. I'm yeah. Our stage manager said she took her daughter and they had a great time and yeah. the, the whole place was full and it was like really The best thing out. about that though, her daughter's 14 and was not alive when the first yeah. one came out <laughs> and didn't even know like, what's this movie? Yeah. Like, what? what? Like, and I, we were 10, so it's like, it's crazy. Anyway. Yeah, well. I don't know. well yeah. Speaking of keeping it funny for Allie, because, you know, she doesn't want it to be a downer. <laughs> Saturday Night Live cast member Leslie Jones is hoping the show can find other things to joke about besides Donald Trump. In a recent interview with The Rep, Jones said that she wants next season to be a lot more funny, funny-based stuff, more comedy-based stuff, instead of a lot of political stuff. Preach. What stuff. do you think? I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I watch SNL. I'm a big fan of the show. But 
they kill characters. Like, they take all the fun out of it. Like, the first two times he did Donald Trump, it was great. The next 1,400 times, it was not as enjoyable. Like, I yeah. think you have to leave us wanting more, and SNL sort of, like, keeps it going t too long. Believe it or not, I think they have some rule that they have to, like, hit a quota for a certain number of, like, political sketches an episode. Oh. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it might be too much. It is, like, a lot when you see Alec Baldwin every episode. And also, yeah. the cold open is always political. Yeah. I think that's why I get kind of frustrated, because... Like, Alec Baldwin, he's great, but he's not a cast member, and they have such great yeah. cast members mm -hmm. that I'm like, yeah, I want Leslie Jones to have her time, you know? So every moment that Alec Baldwin's on TV, Leslie Jones might not be on exactly. TV, and that sucks. Well, so. she actually got to play Trump in a skit. They were making jokes <laughs> about it. I mean, I agree. I think Netflix, I mean, SNL should be as funny as possible, but I also think, as Leslie Jones says in this interview with The Wrap, like, they do have a responsibility. I think they're satire, and they have to poke fun at the dysfunction and also the complex issues coming out of D.C. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about SNL the past 10 years, those great political sketches. We had Tina Fey, Sarah Palin. Yeah. We had Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton, as the real Hillary Clinton played a waitress named Val. <laughs> that is gold. That, we need more of that. That is so funny. So I mean, yes, I think it's striking up that balance, making sure all cast members are utilized, but also, I love the political stuff in SNL. I think it's at SNL at its best. In moderation, though. Yeah. Fine, but, all, but if right now we're in such a heightened political time, I think we need humor to make fun of and joke about and understand all that's happening in D.C. But don't you think that constantly bringing it up almost makes it not funny and it makes it like more... It's like you can't even go enjoy SNL and laugh because you're, it's going to be politicized. I don't know. Kate McKinnon as Jeff Sessions, Jeff Sessions coming out of her cabinet like a little elf. I think that's hysterical. I can watch that Yeah, but day. like not the 15th time is my point. Yeah, yeah also Kate McKinnon right. is so talented. She doesn't need <laughs> to play Jeff Sessions. I think he's wrong. I think he's wrong. Think he's wrong. You. Well, you're I wrong. Think so. I Shoot. don't think so. Huh? I think I'm right, and this is my fight song. Okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I will give you two the castmates. Like Maria Villasenor is so funny. Melissa. Melissa, thank you. Yeah. She does like amazing impersonations. And she's next on that. Yeah. <laughs> but I never get to see her do skits. I remember seeing her on like yeah. America's Got Talent or something and was so excited mm -hmm. when they put her in the cast. And she's really just like a backup person all the time. That's the thing. I just feel like SNL, like it's not going anywhere. You know, we know it's going to be on TV. I wish that they would just pop off and go hard and yeah. like just do new <laughs> shit and like surprise but. us because they could do whatever they want. They have such amazing writers, such amazing yes. actors on the show. They're set up to like, I mean, they could be. Be what blowing do you mean our by minds. Pop off. Pop off like they could do stuff that Doing, like, we have not political stuff. Not just not political stuff, but like they could do, you know, like they could bring in, like they could break the mold for comedy basically. Right. Like, you know, they could well, show us a new type of sketch. Like comedy is so vast that like anything can happen. Yeah. And what we're seeing from them is very like, you know, the format that they've mm -hmm. been doing for years. And I feel like the people who work there are super cool. I just want to see them be free. Right, like when Andy Samberg was on Lonely Island, they did the, yeah, digital, the digital shorts. shorts. That revolutionized SNL for a bit and really started that the whole The digital trend. shorts are still amazing. They're still yeah. amazing. Those are and really And those great. are rarely ever political. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Those, are, those are so good. They're so like of the, like whatever they're trying to parody, I always feel like they're so like apt at yes, doing it. They really are. They're so good. Yeah. I think SNL's aware. Was it with Donald Glover? They did the opening monologue where they all they have is celebrities and none of the cast members get screen time or something. <laughs> so they, I think they're aware that this is a criticism, and I'm sure next season they're going to adapt and, like, yeah. try to be maybe yeah. giving the featured players more time. I'm sure they're watching right now, and they'll yes. take our criticism. Lauren Michaels. Yeah. Yeah. All me. He's always watching. Yeah. <laughs> Hot take. SNL should be funny. Anyway, in other TV news, we got a great show coming back soon. The ladies of Lynchfield are back, guys. Netflix has released a sneak peek of Orange is New Black's new set, but this time the inmates will no longer be at house at Lynchfield Penitentiary. The photos confirm that they will be relocated to a maximum security prison. The new season begins streaming on July 27th. Yes. Are you all Orange so Black fans? You guys watch? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you guys caught up? Wow. Because I have to admit something. I did not watch season five because I didn't hear great things about it. Yeah. And but I watched the first four. I love the first season four. Season five? But yeah, season yeah. five. Even Jen G. Cohen said that season some right. of the storylines were fan fiction. They're like, <laughs> haven't they served their time? Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, why is Piper? She had like an 11 month season. I know, like, yeah. the she was out like in a week. So they would dress. She's like, it's my seventh year <laughs> in prison. I'm like, oh, what do you do? You, like, you, you pickpocketed <laughs> someone? This is out of order. They address that though because it's why they can't do current events jokes because it's not current events. Yeah. So it's only been like 
six months in Orange New Wait, Black World. what do you world. mean it's not current? Whoa. So in Orange New Black World, it's it's been like six months. In real life, it's been five seasons. I hate yeah. it's only when been shows six do that. Months? Well, they ha again, they have to because she would be out in a season. I literally hate that. I can't keep track of time. That's like on yeah. the show 24 and the whole season's like, this is one day. <laughs> like, no, it's not. Like, that's too much. It's been yeah. eight that's years. That's definitely, like, that's too now much. Now I'm like, more, I'm like more impressed because I didn't realize it's been six months. Time. Yeah. time is not linear, well, okay, Ali? Yeah, sometimes when you watch a show, you have to suspend this a little bit yeah. and, and go with it. And, and so they're go. now they're in a new jail. Yes, now they are in a new maximum security prison, and I think some of them got split up. Well, oh, very no. what happened at the end of yeah. last season is that they had taken over Wait, the. Spoiler! Alert, spoiler! Yeah. Alert, spoiler! Alert. Yeah. I mean, guys, it's been on TV for a while. If you ever watched it, that's I haven't on watched you. Watched it yet? No. Well, basically, <laughs> well, we're gonna spoil okay, it. Okay. Right well, now, basically, so, some yeah. stuff went down at Litchfield, so they couldn't be housed there anymore. So they were moved to a second oh, yeah. location. Okay. I just interviewed uh, Jackie Cruz, who plays Flaca, and she plug 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 on build. And she confirmed, she was like, yeah, we're shooting in a whole new place. Everything's different. So I feel like if you haven't watched, it's a good time to catch up because I feel like next season is really going to like take off. Are we going to watch and be like, wow, this prison's like so much better than the last prison. <laughs> I like, think so. I mean, prison. look at the yeah. photos. Yeah, the, the photos, photos do look nice oh, wow. where they have those yellow tables that really pop. That they nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the well, mildew. It's yeah. not a Four Seasons. I mean, it's it's a prison still. I like those showers better than the last showers. The last showers were like, what's gonna happen in there, you know? Oh, right. I would I would not survive a day. We know. We know. We know. Like, oh, do we all? Don't you worry. all know that too right now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's been ten minutes. You're like, oh, Lucas would die. Nobody here in there. thought you were would, gonna be good. No, you would die for minimum Lucas security. Would kill yeah. Us. yeah. They come from the talk. I'm just um. Yeah. yeah my, I'm uh, concerned for you going outside cried. in the 90 degree weather. <laughs> It is so hot. Lucas, it is do so not hot drop soap in prison. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for yeah. somebody to make that joke, and um, Ali, thank you. For and of course, it was I Lucas. Curse. Hopefully, yeah. I won't be going there anytime soon. So yeah, <laughs> you never know. At least just stay at Litchfield, which is like the minimum security. Max is a whole yeah. game. It, isn't that what like, Teresa Judice stated? That minimum equipment? security. Minimum, like, yeah. like the, what this was based off. Of, right? Prostitution. <laughs> 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 we'll get the real houses another time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a philosopher of sorts. Um, yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I think it's a good time to move on to our very first celebrity <laughs> guest. We're doing a little interview segment. Um, now, jo Joy Nash is the star of Dietland, an AMC based or show on AMC based on Sar Soraya Walker's best selling novel, Dietland. Uh, it follows Alicia Plum Kettle, played by Nash, who is a ghostwriter for the editor of one of New York's hottest fashion magazines. The show is narrated by Plum, who struggles with self image and fitting into mainstream society because of her weight. Let's take a look. Sorry, what was I saying? Um, plus size fashion. Fashion week, yes. Renee Tyler is doing a show for big gals at Clarkson Square. And I want you to cover it. Really? You're our hidden resource. You know what these people want. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, that, that is exciting. How does it, that work? I go to the show. Oh no, they're showing it on Facebook Live. You'll watch it there. Oh. I'll send one of the regular girls, you know, just to show support. And I'm your hidden resource. Exactly. But you'll have your very own name in the magazine. How about that? Everyone, please help, them well, help, help us welcome my very first guest on Build Brunch, Joy Nash. Woo! Hi. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, guys. So cool. Thank you so much for joining us on our very first show. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. So I've watched a couple episodes. It's only a couple episodes in. What has the feedback been like so far from, from viewers? Um, it's been really good. It's Yeah, I've gotten some really crazy emails from people. Like what? Um, just that, that they've never seen as somebody you represented. I, I don't know. The, yeah. The, that, yeah, that we're hitting it on the, the nose. That, uh. Yeah, so you're saying you're like connecting with viewers in yeah. a way that you didn't expect. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. How does that feel? It feels great. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, and a part of me is is a little not surprised. Like, like I've been craving a show like this, yeah. and it's really exciting to yeah. be a part of it. I'm totally not surprised that people are emailing you and probably feel so connected because, yeah, when you watch TV, it's very like, okay, we all look the same, and you don't really see yourself. And so representation is so important. And I think, like, I'm just happy. I'm happy you're on TV. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. <laughs> me too. Yeah. What, uh, what I um, I love the show. What I love about it, you guys haven't seen it. Like, it's very brave in its creative storytelling. It uses mm -hmm. animation. It goes to the dream sequences. But my favorite scene in the pilot was the um, waste watcher scene. Oh and yeah. The woman comes in and does this incredibly powerful and funny and just amazing rant. 
that's kind of something what you kind of did in real life. How yeah. do you feel watching it now as your, your character's not doing that and you're just watching it happen? Yeah, it was so fun. And like to have the opposite side of it, like to, to I, like think about the first time I saw somebody, a fat person, fully living their life mm -hmm. and just like jaw drop, this is possible. Yeah. Like it's exciting to sit on the other side of that. Absolutely. And he mentioned that you, you had a video that went viral. Yeah. And it's called Fat Rant. Yeah. And we actually have a clip of it. So we're going to oh, show no. that real quick. Oh, no. I love it. Let's take that clip. Uh. I'm fat. The vast majority of the time, I don't let the tiny little minds get me down. <laughs> it happens a lot. I hear someone talking about 200. <laughs> <laughs> like it's breathtaking. I weigh 224 and my quality of life has not suffered dramatically. Fat, it's three little letters. What are you so afraid of? <laughs> so, you know, you made big waves with that video. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, that's how they first discovered you. What was, uh, you know, the reaction like to that video? Um, it was cool. It was actually, it feels similar to what they were talking about with Dietland. Yeah. Um, I got lots of hate mm -hmm. and lots of uh, really heartwarming, positive emails, which were almost, those were a little more challenging to deal with mm -hmm. often because people are sharing their souls and yeah, of like course. they need a response. And, and sometimes with volume and time, like uh, that was hard to get back to everybody, you mm -hmm. know. Do you feel a responsibility now with everything that you do to, how, can I like put forth these messages, be a representation to people, like be a role model? I know it's, it's a lot. Like, <laughs> it's so much. Should I put it that is. on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I feel like that that's what it's asking for. It's, right. But it is, it's, I'm really nervous that I'm misstepping constantly. Oh. But I, I mean, I feel like, what else can I do? Right, no, you're, you're doing a great job. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> we actually had Juliana here recently, and you, oh, yeah. you play opposite her a lot. Yeah. And she sort of, talked about the theme of the show being not waiting for your life to start, not waiting yes. until you lose 30 pounds yes. just to start your life, start it now. Totally. So what do you have to say to that and it being like the overwhelming theme of the show? That's what it is to me yeah. too. I think, I mean, Plum thinks that her life is gonna start once she's thin. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody, even if it's not wait, it's my life will start once I get married, once I get the job I wanted, once I fill in the blank. And your life has started already. This is it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And your life has taken a huge turn <laughs> with this acting role. This is your first major role. Yeah. So what has that experience been like for you? It's been awesome. Um, shooting was a total dream. Uh -huh. People keep asking me, you know, are you ready? <laughs> things are going to change. <laughs> but I'm sort of really stubbornly acting or doing exactly the same things that I have been doing, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it like, though, working with, like, Juliana Margulies, one of the greatest TV stars, literally of all time. Right? Like, what is that like? That scene when you're in our office is incredible, and you guys uh, saw a clip of it, like, on so many she levels. so much shade. So much yeah. shade, and poor Plum's yeah. just like, mm-hmm, you, you, you think she has a great idea for a story. Yeah. And yeah. like, but how would you have the time? Yeah. You're writing my letters. It's, yeah. a, it's an incredible, incredible <laughs> scene. But what is it like acting alongside her? She's a dream. I just feel like I was learning through osmosis constantly. But that, that role, like, I've been a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. I'm sure tons of people mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. with a crazy boss who has the purse strings, who's going to write your check <laughs> if you don't piss them off. Off. Like, so it's it's yeah. that thing of sitting there and knowing what you know and just yeah. waiting for <laughs> the bell to ring. You know? <laughs> and, and before we go, what are your hopes for Plum, the character? Because I'm sure by this point, you're probably really connected to her. Yeah, yeah. I hope that, oh, I hope she gets everything. I hope, <laughs> I hope that she falls in love. I hope that she finds a career that, that fully expresses mm -hmm. herself. I hope that she travels. She's so good Ooh. at so many things yeah. on the show. Baking, singing, <laughs> so I said that. I like, Come on, what's yeah. the deal? I, thanks, I suppose <laughs> is all I can say to that. <laughs> well, Joy, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and make sure, don't forget, you can catch the first season of Dietland every Monday on AMC at 9, 8 Central. Central, give it up for Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, that's all. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. Bye, guys. Bye.